Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an instructive game to share with you from the 2016 Olympiad on the white end, Wei Yi, playing against international master Bidri Sadiku. Alright, I think this game can be especially instructive for those of you who encounter opponents who like to push a lot of pawns in the opening phase. We're going to see how Wei Yi handles such an opponent and what he's, let's say, not afraid to do. On board French defense, knight d2 signals the Tarash variation. Now, the bishop is obstructed with this line. Uh, why obstruct the bishop? Why not go to c3 instead? You do invite the Winoir variation, pinned knight. So, with this Tarash, we don't have to worry about any bishop b4 pin. There's always c3 now, breaking the pin. Follow up here, a6. This is the modern system. What is its point? Well, in on the surface note, controls b5 takes away bishop b5 lines. The deeper point, however, is that black doesn't want to see a certain structure by white, a certain pawn advance. What am I talking about? Well, instead of a6, let's say knight f6, e5, knight d7. This here is the pawn advance black really doesn't want to see by playing this uh, a6 move. White, by playing f4, now has another pawn contributing to central control, supporting the big e5 pawn. So in a way, this a6 modern system, it's a waiting move. Waiting for what? Waiting for white's king knight to go to its favorite square. That's what we have in this game. Knight g to f3. So now black doesn't have to worry about this f pawn contributing. Now black in this case does not continue now with knight f6. Makes a purposeful move. Goes with c5 striking white center. E takes d. E takes d. Pawn does a good job of taming the d2 knight. I like to view it as this pawn restricting the knight and really the queen side for the moment. No good knight move, no good bishop or rook move. All right, from here, bishop e2. Why not go to a more active square? Well, you have to respect this c pawn. It could go to c4 and your bishop has to find a new square. So this is a valuable move to get in with tempo. So in this case, it's the less active, more stable post. Follow up knight c6, castles, and now c4. In reply to c4, white challenges the invasive pawn right away. Black is making a lot of pawn moves so far. Only one piece move. Now, before I put on b4, or b3, I want to point out a nice sacrifice that is right around the corner for white. If you play rook e1 here, what move do you think black is going to play? Seeing how this is a completely open file and a possible check is right around the corner, you're probably going to want to get that king castled as soon as possible, so bishop e7 seems super sensible. Next up, knight f6, kingside castles. In this position, here's a sacrifice now for white. Very strong move, knight takes c4. What's the point? To let this d pawn run wild. Possibilities of d6 nearby, exploiting the pinned bishop. Very easy for black to go wrong here. Knight b4, white is already winning in this position, ready to trap the knight and track down the bishop with d6. And if the knight goes home, bishop f4 is very strong, supporting d6. Very scary position for black. Okay, this sacrifice, something to keep in mind out of this Tarash variation. In this game, the c4 pawn is challenged right away. 
Black continues here with b5, reinforcing that point. Before white played b3, he had to consider, you know, what am I doing if black plays c3? I want to have a brief look at this c3 move, give you a feel for how you can develop if c3 is played. First of all, this knight would now have only one option. Got to go back home. And if black tries to hang on to this pawn in the following way, and you try to scare the bishop away, and queen a5 pinning the pawn to the unprotected rook, how do you continue here as white? In short, continue to develop your queen side. Bishop f4, and this funny looking move, knight b to d2. This unpins the pawn. White's prepared now that the rook is defended to meet pawn takes knight with pawn takes bishop. And the other key point is that if black rescues the bishop, you can insert b4, kicking the queen away, and then return home. This pawn will soon be tracked. Black could try to hang on for another second, but you could put another attacker on it. The c pawn will fall shortly. Okay, in our game, b3 is met with b5. Rook e1 now. And bishop to e7. Follow up, a4. Now, in reply to a4, black plays c3. And this is considered a losing move. What's considered best here for black is bishop to e7, allowing the queen to defend the rook, allowing black to now meet a takes b with a takes b. There is right around the corner for white yet another sacrifice, this knight takes c4 move. I'd like to put this on to show you. Here's how you can continue chopping away on c4 in the event of b takes c4. Knight takes c4 is there yet again with the follow-up fork. Getting the material back and in the end still being the better side. White is better developed. And a slight tweak to that variation right here. If d takes c, yet again, you would have knight takes c4. Pawn takes knight, you got the fork. And in the event of bishop takes... No problem, this d pawn runs ahead, hitting the knight, and next taking advantage of the pinned bishop. Okay, this shows up quite a bit in this Tarash line. In response to a4, black plays c3. Now, I'd like to pause for a moment. Ten moves in, does anything stick out to you about these first ten moves? From Black's perspective, Black has made eight pawn moves. 80% of Black's first 10 moves, pawn moves. That should be a cue for you to maybe look for continuations where you maybe sacrifice some material to continue to develop, to open lines. That's one way you can look at it. I'm not saying it's the best. Uh, observation to make. It's probably better to look at the difference between both sides. Black's made three more pawn moves than white. White has a lead in development. Looking for ways to maybe sacrifice material, uh, that should be on your radar. In some cases, it may not only be possible for you to make a sacrifice and it be good, might be necessary in some cases. I'm not saying necessary here. Black's reply, uh, knight f1 in this position is a fine approach, allowing black to establish these invasive pawns. But white plays it in a sacrificial way. He gives up this knight in this game. He continues with a takes b5. This is the absolute best. He's giving up minimal, a minimal amount of material, I would say. He's opening a line for the rook. This pawn is pinned. Also, there's a valuable tempo 
against the knight at the end of this. Black takes the knight. Recapture on d2, and now where do you go with this guy? If you go to b4, well, after c3, you're cooked. Get the material right back. So in this game, it goes back home. Where do we stand here? Black has the knight. White has a couple pawns for it and a huge lead in development. Play follows here with b takes a. And the response here is bishop takes a. Something I found uh, a bit funny here. <laughs> Black is only one move away from setting up his pieces for the next game. <laughs> uh, just a, a, a funny move to see in a position like this. Uh, we would have checkmate, double checkmate. But yeah, this is how bad it is for Black to be just one move away from setting up your pieces for the next game. Something has clearly gone wrong. If you're, you know, over a dozen moves into the game. Any case, play continues here with the bishop captures a6. The bishop is pinned to the rook. Play follows now with the bishop b5 check and chalk up yet another negative for Team Black. He is now uncastled. We continue to develop. Knight e5 opens up a path for the queen. Black plays queen d6 here. If instead knight f6, at least cutting out a couple queen moves, well, white can chop away on a6 and in the end drop a knight on c6, landing a fork. The bishop uh, will be one next. So, what is a point behind queen d6? Cover the knight c6 jump. From here, scholar's mate style, queen h5 looking for mate on f7. How do you defend that? In the game, it's g6. What other try? Well, knight h6 is not going to cut it. Not stable. What about the queen? That's not working. There's knight d7. Knight's covered. Knight's landing a check. Queen is under fire. Queen is lost. And if queen f6, we can bother the queen. Try to deflect the queen from defending f7 with the bishop first, and even the pawn. White is winning here. Says best is to go to e6. We would still have knight d7. Okay, in this game, it is g6. White takes full advantage over the newly weakened h6 square with bishop h6 check. Only move is to capture, and only move king g8. Final move of this game, a very pretty one, bishop e8, and black resigns. How do you stop bishop takes f7 mate? You have to give up the queen in order to stop the mate. This last move does an excellent job of highlighting the complete lack of development by black. Look at the disconnect between the rooks. No rook in position to stop this cool finish. If play did continue here with the queen defending f7, here's one way you can continue. Plenty of ways to do it from here, but this should make things much clearer. Completely gone for team black. So, what did you think of this one? Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.